such a piece of my childhood. Thank you, Night Rider. Hello, Chip Dippers. Join me today in this rather terrifying location where I'm hunting for the most loved but never found filming location of Night Rider. Wish me luck. Kid! Michael, help! This one's on me. The next one is on me. I shall have to recommend he be reclassified for light duty. Kit is the world's greatest automobile. He cannot be trusted under pressure. What happened? Let's do it! Retro Recipes, a pixelated flight into the nostalgic world of a man whose tech no longer exists. Parafractic, a grown-up young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of innocent childhood nostalgia. The Curious, the Powerless, in a world of distracting peripherals that operate above old-school law. Retro Recipes. Wait here while I go look for you, okay, buddy? Good heavens, and I thought Michael was difficult. So, for those who haven't seen Junkyard Dog for 40 years, or maybe ever, here's what you need to know, along with some of the coolest music ever heard in a TV episode, thanks to Don Peake. So, whilst using a Texas Instruments PC combined with a VHS player, as you do, to investigate a baddie dumping toxic waste, Kit gets dumped in the acid waste himself. Michael, help me! And dissolved to the shell, apart from the air conditioning knobs and the tires for some reason, leaving Michael and any 10 year old boy like I was, frankly shell shocked and genuinely heartbroken. Yeah. Because Bonnie implies Kit is gone forever. Still, they use that Texas Instruments PC to reassemble Wilton Knight's original team to try to rebuild Kit, and the bulk of the episode takes place here, at the workshop inside the Foundation for Law and Government. They do rebuild him, but he has a crisis of confidence, so they rebuild him some more, but he has a crisis of confidence some more, until Michael quite movingly shares his own experiences with PTSD from the events that took place in the pilot episode, to which his partner Kit regains his faith in himself and in their partnership, and puts the baddie firmly in his place, which happens to be the same acid pit. And the place that we're going to try and find is that flag workshop itself. You thought it was a TV studio? Haha, -ha, it's not, despite all those blinky light computers. But I will mention, I tracked down exactly where the acid pit was and tried to gain access, but it's private property, no longer available for filming. It is interesting that if you go back in time, you can see those two buildings that served as the baddies headquarters right next to the acid pit. That's it. But sadly, they were demolished a few years ago. And it looks like they're doing some building work there now. You can see the foundations going in. Maybe I'll crack that for a future recipe, but for now, let's hit the road in Kitesla in search of the foundation itself. Now, as you may remember, at the College of Canyons is where I filmed a lot of the other locations from Junkyard Dog. Now, I won't show you all those again because you can check out that video after this one, but I have received a tip-off and a map from a top secret source that one of the most iconic locations is actually back there. And I didn't know it was there. It's the automotive division at the college itself where they teach all about car repairs. And there are three main places that I want us to find. Firstly, the main workshop with these distinctive bay doors where you can see Kit actually gets moved from bay three to bay four to bay five. Secondly, this break room where Michael reminisces about his dissolved buddy. And lastly, this corridor, where he plots his revenge with his Woman of the Week. And of course, just the building itself. So distinctive, so special to me as a Night Rider fan. So I'm driving there now because I've sent them three emails and tried photo calls, and I can't get a reply. It just means they just don't really know how to handle it and probably are not in touch with how important, of course, Night Rider really is to the world because it is the middle of the day and they should be open. So I'm just gonna roll up, not roll up the doors, or maybe, roll up in Kitesla, knock on the door and see what we can see. Fingers crossed. There is the semi-trailer. If I 
exit through here, I guess it's allowed. I've clearly taken a wrong turn, okay? Let's try this again. I should probably just consult the map of the college, huh? So these are the locations we found in that previous episode, but rumor has it that here is the general area where Kit was rebuilt. Now, full disclosure, it is very unlikely the building is still the same one, but it's worth a shot. Hey, you've got a black Tesla, not fair. I think we go up here. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, at this point, I'm lost. I see buildings with roll-up doors down there. Very confusing. Ah, oh, good. Can I park in here? Wow, this is a junkyard. Five minutes away in Earth for that. My heart is racing. Oh boy. But unfortunately they didn't know anywhere with two or more roll-up doors, which along with this big open space is specifically what we're looking for. But either way, I asked the person in charge if we could just take a stroll inside. Are you okay if I film it for historical purposes? Thank you so much. Well, I guess that makes me a night rider historian. If this is a new building, it's no wonder it's completely unrecognizable. Remember, we're looking for things like this side break room. We should be at the back here, but there's just nothing like that. It's a double door bus. But the angles are just all wrong here. You see the break room doors specifically face the roll up door. You can see the large painted number three here. So the break room's right behind us there. They then walk inside the break room and obviously they don't expect these drinks machines and pastries to still be there. But maybe they are. Let's have a look at it. you already the roll-up door with the number three has to be directly opposite the break room this one's too far off to one side don't you listen to me when i talk to me of course so much changes over time doesn't it but there was a sign on the double doors that michael went through that said actually said lecture hall that's how you know it was a classroom i'm authorized could this be the lecture hall <laughs> if i go out am i not going to be able to get back in Yeah, that's the end of the building. Oh, wow. Now, if we whip out our flag top secret map, all this exploring is actually really helping because trust me when I say this place is really confusing to walk around, but we can now tell that we are firmly in this part of the foundation for law and government. I don't know how that helps us, but we're on the map. Let's see if this is open, I doubt it. Oh. Hello? Scary. Yes, somehow this just turned into Halloween night instead of Night Rider. But after a lot more exploring, hunting for those roll-up doors, I found myself in this classroom. 
Is there any light switch? Absolutely terrifying. It doesn't help. Okay. Hang on, there's a corridor through here. I'll rattle this chain real good. Now let's see if you were right. Now he's going to do it. He's going to burn that toxic waste site to the ground and then go find a new place to poison. How's Kit doing? They're still working on it. Wonder. No, that's not it. I wonder. Computer lab. Ah, uh, just imagine what this would have looked like back in 1985 when they were filming season three, episode 14 here. Only without this server room. But I suppose if they needed parts for these, I'd recommend PCB Way, where you can get great quality PCBs for your modern servers or 80s Apple IIs from just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB Way stands for Perifractics Classroom Break In Way. Map out. That is absolutely it, isn't it? This was absolutely a corridor. You can tell it's the same because of the light fixtures are the same. And although they've removed the signs that were in shot, they've still got the old fashioned signs right here. Oh, sorry, it's a minute ago. Scared the poor guy coming out of his toilet break. Okay, I wish I could have filmed what just happened. Um, so I was just taking a quick break from filming and looking at reference footage to kind of match to screen match, and. Uh, a lovely person came by and I said, excuse me, and she said, well, that's okay. And I said, hey, you don't know if any Knight Rider filming locations here, do you? And they said, no, not really. Apart from the one that was filmed in 1983 in season three, episode 15. And she said she often challenges her students to try to find one of David Hasselhoff's chest hairs in the corridors here. We ended up in their office looking at clips of it on Amazon Prime. And I'm sorry to say, I didn't find any chest hair. But I'll keep looking. And I'll keep looking for the starring location because I desperately want to find it. For me, for you, and for every young kid who watched episodes like this again and again and just fell in love for life. You know, I used to watch this rebuild sequence with that incredible music with my friend Jamie Fractic until we actually wore out the VHS recording. It was that special to me. And in fact, that prop is something I've been so in love with my whole life. I've actually recently tracked down exactly where it is. More on that coming up in a special joint episode with the Knight Rider historians. So come on, we've got to figure out for sure whether or not that whole location survived. And my friend didn't want to spoil the fun, but she did tell me to take a closer look at somewhere I'd been before, this time with an open mind and an open plan. And she said, then we might see the light. Curious.
as I like to do. Such a piece of my childhood. Thank you, Night Rider. Wow, I can't believe we found it. But we're not done yet. First though, just to illustrate what I meant when I said that this was a new wall, back in 1985 this would have been all open plan, and what is now a classrooms next door was bays 4 and 3, as seen in Knight Rider. And what a great open plan space it was. Anyone got a sledgehammer? Oh wait, I get what she means now. Open plan, open mind. <laughs> nice. Well, speaking of plans, before I show you some rather special things coming up, now the layout of this confusing place finally makes some sort of sense, we can throw out those silly old blueprints from 2002, because I found this up-to-date map on the wall, so let's tidy it up and enjoy where we're up to. Here's that corridor we found. Here's Bay 3, which is now the classroom that we peered into. And here's the welding shop, Bay 5, looking into Bay 4, with the number 4 on the door there, which is now also a walled up classroom. And here's that break room where Michael has those sentimental moments, reminiscing about all the good times with Tonto, I mean, uh, Kit. And although that Bay 3 classroom was locked today, seeing just that glimpse of those double doors and what lies beyond them, those pastry and coffee machines, for example, just makes me doubly determined to go and find that room in the flesh for you. And that's exactly what's coming up in a future recipe. Make sure you're subscribed or join Retro Recipes Power Up on Patreon to support the channel and get early access to that video, because we've not only just been invited back to go into that break room, also now a classroom, but we're going to climb up into the newer false ceiling to see if the original lights are there as seen in the show in Bay 3. I'm going to recreate Michael's own nostalgic moment. I'll also bring my actual childhood Kit toy car with me to act as a stand-in for recreating where Kit himself would have been and much more. Until then, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and support below. Cheerio. And remember, one chest hair can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. Oh shoot, guys, I think they're on to me.